So yeah, welcome to this session on comparing webinars. And I will just share the link to the last session so you can follow up in your own time. The, uh, so we went through in the first session the basics of um, what to think about with CRMs um, and a lot of issues and that sort of stuff. So this, this um, session, we're literally gonna be talking about specific applications, um, the most used applications and have a chat. So we've moved from a webinar format to a meeting format because we do wanna have much more questions. We will do a basic overview of all the apps, but yeah, we really wanna get into the nitty gritty of what people are trying to do and what they wanna do. So firstly, I'll introduce um, our four co-hosts. I won't introduce them. I'll get them to introduce themselves. So maybe I'll start with Ariane. Hello, um, my name's Ariane. I started in the progressive movement back as an organizer over a decade ago and I've worked with a lot of the nonprofits um, and political parties, both in Australia and in America. And um, yeah, most recently I'm now at Essential Media working as a consultant and really enjoying that. So we work for lots of nonprofits and unions, anyone sort of left of centre, um, basically building websites and doing media, PR, anything, government relations, anything that's needed for campaigns. Um, I started using a, like the CRMs, mostly Nation Builder, um, back when that was the most popular one in Australia and was really like getting off the ground. Um, I will happily, um, after we've gone through Nation Builder, talk a bit about why I do and don't like that as well. But I'm going to be presenting on Action Network today, which I think is a really good platform that's much more recent to the Australian scene. Um, and yeah, really keen to get this discussion going. Um, and how about you, David? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, good day. Um, David Paris. I've been well, I don't know, I guess I started, uh, I was the first digital comms campaigner person hired uh, by the Australian Greens when it first became a thing. Um, and before the first election where Facebook was uh, popular at all. And then I've been in and around the scene kind of ever since then and have used... Uh, scoped and implemented kind of every campaign tool under the sun at, di at different times. Um, and I found that the, the, the longer I've used uh, different tools, the, the less strong my opinions are about the, <laughs> the utility of, of each one. Uh, and there's a lot of other factors that, that go into it, which, uh, which you all discussed on, on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, hopefully with the, uh, with a, a range of, of tools that I've used, I'll have some uh, useful info to, to offer folks. Thank you. Um, would you like to go, Bess? Is Bess on the line? Unmute. There we go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name's Bess. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator at the Cairns and Far North Environment Centre, which is. Um, um, little environment non-profit up in far north Queensland that's been fighting the good fight for nearly 40 years. It's our 40 year anniversary next year, which is pretty exciting. Um, we, um, we have a long history, but we have recently sort of had an overhaul of our website and database and everything. And um, we've moved to Kepler Raisley. So today I'm going to go through that and, um, how the tools work and yeah I'm excited to share it with you because like Glenn said um, I wish that someone had done this webinar when we started looking into how we were going to sort out all of our data um, a few years ago and that's how long it's taken. <laughs> um, and Phil? Hi everyone my name is Phil Evans. Um, I'm uh, currently on Wurundjeri land in the Kulin Nation down in Melbourne um, and sovereignty of this land's never being ceded and difficult times at the moment. Um, the, uh, I'm the development coordinator with Friends of the Earth Australia and we've been using um, Nation Builder for our CRM for now about eight years. 
Um, I'm going to talk a lot about um, what it's like to be trapped in a system um, and wanting to get out of it, but um, the difficulties of doing that, but also talk about some of the positive things because Nation Builder is a great platform, it's just there are better ones out there now. Um, but also um, talk a little bit about um, how you can really think out of the box to try and make the system work for you rather than um, thinking that you're gonna walk into a system that is perfect design for your organization um, and some of the things that we do at Friends of the Earth to, um, to try and level the field for smaller grassroots groups. And currently I administer about 16 nation builders supporting grassroots groups around Australia. Awesome, so we've got a huge wealth of knowledge. Um, and one of the main reasons that I wanted to run this session of many reasons is that most of the apps that we're talking about are American and American centric. And a lot of the information and research is also American centric, um, which is good in one way because uh, they're having some really successful things happening there and they've got a really vibrant technology scene. Um, but then sometimes a lot of the Australian context, things like SMS and payment gateways and things sometimes don't work or if they default to American states, for example, it gets a bit frustrating. Um, and there's such a plethora of options available. Um, and the CRMs which are specific for not-for-profits, but then you can also use CRMs that are designed for business as well. So yeah, we were really keen just to go through the three most popular ones that I see that's used in Australia. And then David's gonna give even a quicker overrun of some other um, applications that are used um around the place so without further ado i'll hand over to bess and bess will give you a rundown of raisley and kepler awesome hi everyone um yes yeah, so i'm going to go through raisley kepler so the reason that we say raisley kepler is because there's actually two um sister organizations i suppose or platforms um, that were created. So um, they have both come out, um, they're by the same creators and they're, it's Australian based. Um, Raisley, they run as a not-for-profit, um, so the, the money um, that they use, that they generate goes back in um, and were specifically designed for the non-profit sector. So I think that's an interesting base to go from. Um, basically, Kepler, um, I suppose is the database um, side of the systems initially um, and then Raisley was a fundraising platform um, but they're starting to they've started to pull Kepler um, Kepler features the database features into Raisley um, and I think this is a really good thing because um, it was honestly a bit clunky the way that they were connected even though they were um, you know sister um, keep saying organizations, but platforms, sister platforms um, that I suppose were, you know, meant to be used in conjunction, but it, it was a little, it was quite clunky. Um, so they're moving um, these organizing and CRM tools into Raisley, which is the donations platform. Um, and yeah, I can really see the vision for where they're going in the future, but it's a, it's a process um, that's still in process. Um, so we had, we had all of our, um, our member data in Kepler um, and we've now moved that across to Raisley in September. Um, so I'm still figuring out a lot of things in there, but it is a really great tool. Um, and today I'm, I'm gonna focus mostly on Raisley. Um, my understanding is that they are still continuing support for Kepler. Um, so, you know, if you were to start up and go with the using the cap, Kepler platform and then also using Raisley. I think that's, I understand that's something that you could still do. Um, but I'm gonna focus on Raisley today because that's really where they're putting their focus. And I think that's where we're gonna see, you know, the shift in the future, I suppose. Um, yeah, I'm really just gonna, I'm just gonna share my screen and go through the tools with you. Um, I've got, where are we, one moment. Let's share my screen and hopefully this works. How's that look? All good? Awesome. So the first thing we can see is that Kafnek has a lot of supporters whose names are Alan. So maybe we should be targeting more Alans. Um, there's a bit of a theme happening here. <laughs> I'm gonna show you, this is our real database, but I've just got um, first names 
up for you today so that um, you know we're not sharing anything else, but you can have as much information there as you like. Um, but I'm gonna start out by going over the donation tools first because I think the main thing to understand is that um, when considering this platform is that Raisley has been built specifically with the focus on donations. So um, the CRM is, is really getting there um, and there's messaging features as well. Um, but it's really first and foremost um, focused on fundraising. Um, so like Phil was talking about before with um, finding a system that's never gonna be perfect. Um, I find that I'm, I'm tweaking around with this a lot to make it um, to work for our campaigning um, and our organizing people. Um, but I'll go through that a bit more in a minute. So let's just look at the donation side of it first. Um, confusingly, the donation side is under a tab called campaigns, <laughs> but these are not campaigns. Um, these are fundraising campaigns. Um, and I'm going to show you, these are some archived old ones. I'm going to show you this test appeal we have called wrong, um, which someone's created, which obviously they didn't end up using, but it's good because it doesn't have any data in it. Um, so I, I would rate the fundraising tools on Raisley as um, five star um, compared to other systems that I've used. Um, I feel like I've sort of, I've not been forced, <laughs> not forced into using Raisley, but in, um, you know, in us deciding to go with Kepler and then us following over with the merge into Raisley, um, you know, it's like we've moved into the system that is um, fundraising focused, but it's actually been really beneficial for CAFNEC because I think that's something that we, um, you know, we're always leaving behind. We were always campaigning first and um, not doing enough fundraising, but as we all know, although we don't exactly, might not exactly love the capitalist system, we do live within it and we do need funding to power the work that we do. So um, it has been good to have these really great tools to use. Um, so what we're looking at in Wrong, Wrong is a, um, is a, is a campaign, a fundraising campaign. Um, so, you know, this could be, for example, um, for, to, to fund our training program that we've got up at the moment. Um, it's really quite um, flashy, I'd say. I call it the, the tools that they have quite flashy. This is a little dashboard. You get, you know, your recent donations, that sort of stuff um, coming in. Um, they've got these great, um, it's kind of like, it's, a, it's really a website building tool um, within these different fundraising campaigns. And I think there is actually a lot of potential here. Um, despite it being focused around fundraising, you can create all of your custom pages and, and that sort of stuff. So for people who you know, are wanting to run a, a simple um, campaign, it could be an easy way to get a nice looking website up if you didn't know how to use other stuff. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just saw the chat flashing. Um, so let's have a look at what these pages look like. You see what I mean when I say that they come up quite flashy. Um, they, you can edit anything that you like. The donation forms are nice. You can do different, um, you know, lots of different settings for donations, monthly, weekly, whatever. Um, and it's very editable. Like it's almost like um, a Divi website, I guess, in a really pared down way and that you can add different elements and um, things as you need and you can add different pages in a menu. Um, so um, despite them, you know, being focused mainly on fundraising, I feel like the fact that they do have these kind of website -y building tools in here is pretty encouraging and um, exciting. Ba -bum. Yeah, I, and you can, can I just add yeah. to that is that for, as more of a front end developer, um, being in there, I can do whatever I want. Like I've got full control mm. to CSS and aesthetics. So that keeps your nerdy web graphic designers really happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's the same with the messaging tools and that sort of stuff. You can um, code your own templates and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's really cool. Um, I don't even know what the blog is to be honest, but um, I assume it's a blog. 
<laughs> we'll move on. Um, yeah, so then you've got your design. That's just for, um, you know, your campaign forms, that sort of thing. Um, message, messages is where you have um, your automatic messages that you can send out to people, which, I mean, for us, we've really just got our, our, our donation receipting happening through this, this side of it. Um, but you can also do custom messages if you um, pay for the messaging add-on. Um, and you can see here there's journeys. Um, I'm gonna go into the messaging a bit later in the actual messaging section, which sounds confusing, but um, there is a lot of, um, great tools here that you can use like for our you know for our monthly donors um i've got it set up so we've got different journeys that they can get messages about and that sort of thing and um our fundraising has really risen a lot since we've started using these tools um yes there's reports it's all pretty straightforward they seem to be pretty good um but our office manager did say the financial reporting exports aren't quite what she would like yet but I don't know if that's just her because I don't do that end of it <laughs> um, and then you know we've got the settings there's um, you know code here to embed the donation forms into your website um, you don't have to use you know the Raisley pages that they have like for most of ours I'm just embedding these donation forms into our website um, they have they've started um, they've got a matched giving um, platform now that's that's new i haven't used it yet i'm going to use it um, for our end of financial year appeal so we'll see how that goes um yeah there's i don't know the settings are all pretty good um one thing i would say is like there's not really a lot of integrations um yet um but hopefully as a young company that's something we start to see increase um they also have fancy stuff like activity tracking for, you know, people who are doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, riding around on bikes and stuff. I don't, even, I don't know how that works. <laughs> I'm not super into peer-to-peer, -peer, but it's, you know, there's a lot of functionality, I guess, there if you were, you know, doing a peer-to-peer -peer campaign where people had to ride a certain distance and whatever. I think they can link it up to um, Strava and stuff. Anyway fancy stuff um these are some of the integrations um and this is just within the donations um section yeah so on the integrations the ones that they do have are really focused around the the donations part of the platform and not so much the crm there's really not any integrations that i can see so far with the crm so that's a place that they can update i'm um, just checking if there's anything else i wanted to say on the donation tools um, overall, I'd say they're really adaptable, they're easy to use, they look good, they work, they have good webinars. Um, yeah, the, the, fun, the fundraising side of it is really good. Um, so now we've got our three different tabs. So campaigns, the top one, that's for the fundraising one, even though it's called campaigns. People is the CRM and then messages is the, the mass mailer and SMS. Um, so just looking at the, this is the actual CRM, CRME part of it. Um, oh, here we go. I'm just checking the chat because I haven't looked at it. Oh yeah, that's cool what you're saying, Phil. Um, awesome. Um, yeah, so the, the CRM part of it here, we've got our our membership data in here. So I haven't got our full um, MailChimp data and all extra stuff in here yet that's still in process, which is um, just ongoing fun. <laughs> but the, um, the importing tools are, I've found so far pretty good um, and, you know, easy to use. You know, you're just matching up columns and it's seemed to work pretty well so far. We did have some issues with some data not coming over from Kepler, but um, Raisley were able to sort that out for us, which is good. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna give you an overview here. I'm just gonna move this over to the side. Um, so as you can see, I've just got first name and member here um, so that we don't see anyone's information. But if you click on um, the side here, you can have as much data displayed as you like. Um, we have so many fields. 
too many fields. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of options there. Um, looking at the segmenting power, um, the segmenting is, is really quite good in Raisley. It's not as good as Kepler was though. It doesn't have as much power. Um, but again, you know, as they're bringing more tools over and that sort of thing, I would expect that this, you know, would improve. I've already seen it improve in the time that we've been using it. Um, yeah, I'll give you, I'll show you an example. What could we have a look at? Um, oh yeah, fundraising, but no membership tracking and renewals capacity. Yes, it can do that and I'll show you how. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'll just give you a quick example of the segmenting, but it's pretty good. You can see there's, you can use lots of fields, lots of conditions. Um, there's also, um, you know, all of your, if you scroll down, you can segment based on um, interactions, whether they've been emailed, opened emails, um, whether you've messaged them, whether they've donated at all, you can segment by their area, that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of power here, I guess, um, in the same way that um, Kepler did have better tools, I can still segment down here to find out, you know, who's in what postcode that I want to get in touch with ahead of, you know, the Queensland election. And I can see who's donated and what interactions they've been making. Um, but what I can't see is petitions that they're signing and that sort of stuff. And that's where um, we take a, a loss, I guess, in the, um, in the database realm. Um, I'm just going to go into my record so you can just see what a record looks like. because I don't mind if you can't spell my last name. I don't mind if you see my work profile, which doesn't have anything on it. I'm just gonna have to add full name so I can click on it. Um, yeah, usually when you have full name up, it looks a bit nicer, but I just had that. Put a little picture there. Here we go. Um, tags, interactions. Um, these segment updated ones, they're actually me doing worky things, not being a, um, a user. Um, but you can see here, I've made a donation um, in the past and I've got a regular donation here. So this is probably where we can answer Greg's question. Um, the regular donor um, setup in Raisley is really good. Um, you basically set up a campaign um, or you can just have it on your normal donation form. Um, they process monthly, you can receipt um, specifically for them. Um, and like I was showing you earlier, you have the capacity to create those um, user journeys, I suppose. When it comes to membership, that's more complex and is another example of how you have to fiddle around to try and make it work for you. But we've made it work and I know that there's quite a few other organisations who are using Raisley to process membership as well. Um, we're actually in the, mo in the middle at the moment of doing a complete membership transfer. So from our old system onto the new system with Raisley. So I've got like one foot here, one foot there, um, and I'm sort of running a multi-system. Um, and with a really annoying thing for me is that CAFNEC has offered multi-year um, memberships. So it's going to be something I'm going to be doing for... <laughs> the next 18 months at least. Um, but basically the way that we've managed to do the membership is by having a regular donation. Um, I can't actually go into it because there's not a way for me to show you um, without showing people's data. But basically we've just created a regular donation but it's a yearly one um, and it's set up to automatically renew. Um, and what we... Um, what we're going to do is two weeks before people are set to renew, we're going to send them a message and say, hey, you know, you're about to get charged again in two weeks. And if you don't want to be a member anymore, you can click here. Um, and there's the functionality for that. So um, the only other thing that I really had to do in terms of membership to make it work was fiddle around with um, some of the, fiddle around with some of the, um, what's he call it? Um, 
the receipting so that we were not charging, um, so that we're charging GST on our membership because it's a fee for service um, and not a donation. Um, but again, you know, it's possible and we figured it out and other people do it and raise Lishu. Um, the newsletters, um, that's what I'm going to go over next. Um, do, do, do. I'm just checking what else I wanted to talk to you about. I think that's the main things. Um, you know, the segmenting power is really good, not quite as good as Kepler. Um, there's not as many integrations in the CRM as Kepler. Um, for example, there's not a um, MailChimp um, integration yet. Um, but I was told by Raisley staff that that's something they did want to do a few months ago. Um, whether it's actually going to happen now they've got their own messaging tool is another thing. I don't know. Um, but you can ask them. <laughs> um, the other thing is it doesn't have is um, relationships, like relationships between people, um, which is something that Kepler had and I know the other um, CRMs have as well. Um, yeah, I think those are the key things. Um, there, I think there's, you know, there is a lot of fiddling around that you can do um, in terms of, you know, the fields, you can create all your own custom fields. Um, you know, you can manage, the segments are great. You can make lots of different segments. Um, it's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty good, but what we are missing in the, the CRM is that um, it's not physically, um, it's not designed for campaigning. So for example, we are getting um, volunteer forms um, and different forms that aren't associated with payments made on our website. Because at the moment, the only way that I guess data can feed into, um, into Raisley from your website is if someone's making a payment, um, if you get what I mean, like it's associated with a payment. Um, but this was something that we were concerned about when we signed up and Raisley said that they would be able to build these forms for us, simple forms like volunteer forms and that sort of stuff. Um, so my understanding is it'll, it'll be something that can happen in the future. Um, I mean, you know, just it'll just be on there that you can use. But at the moment, they are... <sighs> Sorry, I'm just like my throat funny. Um, at the moment, they're offering to, you know, custom build some of those forms for people. So, you know, again, it's a workaround. It's not ideal, but I think it'll get there in the future. Um, bum, bum. Where are we? Yeah, and I'll go through the messages. Um, so basically, this is your mailer, I suppose, but it's also your SMSer. Um, so in terms of costs, um, I'd say Raisley's pretty affordable for a smaller for a smaller organisation. If you're not too big, um, all of the fundraising tools are free. The CRM tools are free up to two thousand records. Um, so if you don't have more than two thousand records, you can use it for free. It starts to get a bit pricey after that, but I haven't actually checked back recently, but we can look, I think I've got the pricing tab open to show you guys after. Um, and the messaging tools are $39 a month, but that's US dollars, um, which at the moment makes it more expensive. <laughs> um, the messaging tools um, are pretty, they're simple, but you know, I feel like with the trend, towards um, simple mailing that we're seeing in a lot of campaigning, they really do the trick. Um, they, are, you know, you can basically take any segment that you have in your CRM and message them, um, or you can take any um, campaign that you've got donations from and message them. Um, so it's pretty good really. So I'll just quickly, you can do journeys as well. Um, I'll just quickly do an example for you. I have the messages add-on. What are you doing? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I can't. Here's here's an example of of buggy bugs in um, small smaller new systems. Um, we have the messaging thing, and now it won't let me get into it. Well. 
In saying that though, the big systems um, also have bugs as well. Okay, cool. Just, just ask Phil and they should build a lab. <laughs> um, well, I'll, what I'll do instead is I'll show you their cell here, seeing as that I can't access it anymore. Um, this is their, their cell to us. Emails and SMS, um, merge fields, um, automation. Yeah, you can trigger, you can either trigger things, you know, if people sign up, send email five days after or whatever, you know, those sort of features that you expect, um, or you can send them on sp at specific times. Um, yeah, you can just, you know, create the segments that you need within your CRM and, and do that. So that's great. Um, then, yeah, so this is, the, I guess this is important, like with your, with your plain old um, fundraising, not paying for the tools, um, you can do welcome emails, you can automate receipts and, um, you know, send a few simple ones. It just doesn't let you do custom ones, but you can totally edit them to be whatever you wanted. Um, it's just that you couldn't send them out on queue. You could only send them out, you know, when someone actually makes a donation or whatever. Um, then with the messaging tool, um, unlimited templates, which I don't know if that's such a big sell, it makes it sound good, but yeah, it's, that's fine. Um, you, like we were talking about before, you can customize the templates. Um, the simple one is basically, you know, you've got your image at the top, you've got text and you've got some buttons. I mean, it's really all you need at the end of the day, but um, you can get um, cool people who know how to code to code stuff for you too. Um, and you can also, even if you only know a little bit of coding, um, it's easy just to click straight into the um, straight into the templates. Um, you know, if you're like me and you know how to make things go bold or underline or move them down a row, but not much more than that, you can do that yourself. Um, then I think this is an important one, which I'm not sure. It's hard to see on my screen, so I'm just going to highlight it so you can see. So the $39 a month is 20,000 emails and 200 SMSs per month. So if you went over that then you're gonna pay a dollar per thousand emails um, and six cents per SMS. Um, here we go. Um, I'm over time, cool. All right, um, the end, no. <laughs> I think that's it, like to wrap up, I just wanted to show you the tools. Um, basically the main thing for me is that like the, you know, the fundraising's great, the CRM's getting there, the messages are completely fine and do what we would want them to do. Um, but the main thing that I've been grappling with figuring out is how do we do organizing properly and how do we um, you know, get better integrations with our website. Um, like I said, they're a young company and they're actively building things. The tools change, you, know, you see new stuff every week. Um, does it do PayPal? You can connect to Stripe or PayPal um, in the section. Um, how do you manage multi-user access? Yes, um, you can do set different permissions so people can access different sections like just messaging or just whatever. There's a few different options. I actually checked that out today because I was like, oh, I wonder what that is. Um, the only other thing is it doesn't have an events um, you know, doesn't have events capability. Um, but Raisley have told me that's in their um, development schedule. So sometime soon it will. Um, yeah, I guess overall, I'd say there's benefits. Um, the benefits that I see with Raisley is that they're, um, because they're still actively building it and updating it, um, you know, as a user, you can be a part of that. And I'm constantly messaging them saying, hey, this would be really good if you could do that. And, you know, a lot of things they're like, yep, sure, we'll add it in and it, and it happens. Um, so, but there are so cons to that in that, you know, there's not 100% um, everything you need all, the, um, all there all at once. Um, also being, um, I would rate their customer service overall is, um, as pretty good. Um, they're pretty willing to custom code things for you. Um, they've just got a chat tool and, you know, like the other day I, I had these buttons and I couldn't change the color of them. Um, and it was a little bit confusing and they just did it for me straight away. Um, different little things. Um, other things have been harder, um, but overall, you know, I think their technical support is pretty quick. 
um, which is good. Um, yeah, and there are bugs. Um, you know, I haven't, I'm not sure, you know, how buggy it is compared to other things, but there definitely are bugs. But, um, you know, like I said, they seem to be pretty good at dealing with it once you get onto them. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, it's good. I think it could be better. Um, I think it will be better in a few years. Yeah. Or a year. <laughs> the end. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Um, that's given me a good insight. It's been a while since I've used the tool, so it's good to get a bit of an update. So I'm now going to move over to Phil, the, um, to an application that had near market dominance a while ago called Nation Builder, and it's very widely used. Um, and there's, you either love it or hate it. Um, so I'll move over to Phil. Thanks, Glenn. And thanks, Bess. That was really good to go through that. Um, I'm going to disagree initially with Glenn and say I both love and hate Nation Builder simultaneously. Um, it's a platform that really does everything but does nothing well. So it um, is a lot of fun to kind of play around in. And um, the main experience that um, I'll talk about is the Friends of the Earth one, um, which we were early adopters. I think we started using Nation Builder in 2012. Um, and have slowly grown it um, into a shared platform that is accessed by approximately 14 autonomous and independent um, collectives or groupings or member groups of Friends of the Earth. So we use it in a communal shared space, which is not how it was intended to be used. It was actually designed um, back in the day for electioneering in the US, so it's very American-centric in the way that it's designed and laid out. And it's just had a bit of a facelift. So it actually feels a lot nicer than it did maybe um, just over a year ago. So if people haven't seen in for a while, then um, you might enjoy the new look. It's a lot more slick. Um, I'll try and keep this as short as possible, but please feel free to um, chuck in any questions into the chat. It's a really dense program, so I'm not gonna be able to show you all the tools, um, but I'll just give you a kind of a brief sense of some of the things that I think are interesting. So this is what the back end of Nation Builder now looks like. And you can kind of see everything is um, segmented out into um, different areas. So there's a dashboard, which is an activity feed. It's not particularly um, that interesting. Um, you can set goals for your organization. I'll go into that in a second. There's a people section, which is your CRM. There's a website, which is the CMS system, which is Clunky AF, and I'll show you. Um, there's communication, which is your um, email blasting. Um, there's a new section called Workflows, which is automated um, email programs that you can set up. Um, and it does a finance system as well. Um, I'm just going to start by saying, I think if you're going to get Nation Builder, then you need to learn how to use Zapier as well, um, or some sort of equivalent system, because Nation Builder really hits a lot of dead ends really quickly in terms of um, getting reports, um, moving data um, out of it into any sort of finance systems or things like that. It doesn't play well with other things, but Zapier has changed all that. So um, really like think about that if you think about Nation Builder. So um, in the dashboard section, you can set uh, um, goals for your organization. So um, for example, I've set one here for um, one of my supported journeys in a pathway, which I'll show you in a moment. Here we can got an activity feed. So anything that happens within the nation sits here in this kind of Twitter-esque um, kind of feed of things that are happening. Um, you can set different uh, things so you can find, if I want to find people who've had problems donating or left feedback on my website or anything, that I can start to filter that out. Um, Nation Build is really good because you can plug in a lot of uh, information into it. The social media integration is also a love-hate thing and I don't know where I sit on it. Depends on what day and what I'm trying to do. I mean, it's great to be able to integrate people's um, social sense into it, but then there's all sorts of problems that come with that, particularly around duplicate accounts, which is um, anyone who's worked in Nation Builder knows the headache of um, the number of duplicates that it quickly and very annoyingly creates. Um, and there's all these report things that come out, but they're very American centric and you can't change them as far as I know to um, work within a financial year system. So that July 1 to June 30, which is more helpful for reporting. Um, let's jump into the people section because that's ultimately where, you know, like we wanna talk about mostly today. So here you've got just like a list of all the people and this is just a trial account that I've made up. So excuse all the, the silly names. Um, but 
what we can see here is um, the feed is quite helpful and it gives you a lot of information about the people as you go through. So here I know Poopa McDooper has donated $150 throughout time and is a member of my organization as well because Nation Builder does do memberships. Oh, I feel triggered just even thinking about it. Um, so the other thing that Nation Builder is really good for is the tagging system. So um, for me, I use tags um, to track relationship moments um, with supporters as they go along. So if someone signs something, does something, it makes it really easy to do segmentation. And the click and filter function of it is like fantastic. And I don't know what it's like in other CRMs, but it's been a while. Before this, I use Civi CRM. Um, I think David's going to talk about that a little bit later on as well. Um, so you can really easily um, segment data and there's a lot of functionality and sophistication you can do in it. Maybe almost too much because it's very easy to trick yourself into um, some sort of broken um, search that yields no responses. So the main way to sort data in Nation Builder is really about tags, um, which are those individual pieces of information. You can add people into lists so those static snapshots in time of um, a particular data segmentation, or you can save um, dynamic filters, so um, which are really good if you are um, setting up automated email journeys so that you can send through to um, information and it updates live as you do it. And I'll show you that in the communication section in a bit. The other really good thing is um, the pathways. So mapping out those supported journeys or, um, or processes that you want to go through in your organization. It's really easy to move people around on those steps um, and, um, and help to um, sort that out. So you can go into um, what is called a path view. Um, and it gives you a sense of like um, different cards, which shows where all of your journeys, are people who are going along the journey, where they're up to. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of your workflow and what you need to do in, in order to move people along. Uh, what else did I want to do in here? Um, oh yeah, I wanted to pause really briefly and talk about some of the reasons why Nation Builder is terrible. And I've named some of those things as people. One, it is very expensive. <laughs> so um, we're lucky enough to be locked into an old legacy price um, because we're early adopters, but it gets very expensive very quickly. Um, so I am just set up this uh, trial account maybe a couple of days ago or something for I'm showing someone around again. Um, you can see in the, oh, did I go to the right thing? Plans. In the billing section, it can really quickly um, escalate. So I've just set up a basic thing and it's automatically taken me to a team plan, which is, thank God the Aussie dollar bounced back a little bit because uh, <laughs> uh, that would be very expensive um, one month ago. Um, but you can see um, the initial plan starts at $35 US. A month, so that's approximately you know um, sixty odd dollars, fifty to sixty dollars um, Australian a month. You can choose to play annually and save twenty percent, but if you're going to do this, it's going to get expensive. And as you um, get more and more supporters, uh, I think it gets out to around ten dollars per um, five thousand supporters, and then it goes into larger chunks. But the brackets creep really quickly, and Nation Builder is designed to suck in as many people as possible. Um, if you click the wrong button and add in, um, uh, bring in people from your social media accounts that you might have attached, you can really accidentally create bracket creep in your pricing. So it's really dangerous and you really need to keep on top of that. Um, the plans go right up. Um, I use um, an organisational one and between you and me and this hat, it's about six or $7,000 for an organization a year to um, have around 70 to 80,000 supporters in there to give you a sense of an organizational plan. Network plan, I had a meeting with Nation Builder um, the other day and for an equivalent size organization, it was gonna cost around, wait for it, $46,000 per year um, Australian to access the highest level of functionality that the platform has to offer. And the basic systems really do limit you in the work they can do, especially if you're interested in membership functionality. The back to my people list. We've got very expensive. Who's up next? Oh, it's American centric. Well, yeah, a lot of them are. It, it goes down to little things like they spell check wrong. Why America? Why do you spell check like that? Um, and also a lot of the like fields and things that they ask you about um, with uh, donations. 
They're just about American electoral compliance systems. And there's no way to make that Australian. And that kind of pisses me off a little bit. Um, the membership is really annoying, although membership is always annoying. It seems like such a simple thing, but it's not. If you are going to um, get into Nation Builder, really sit down and do that plan and think about your brief and get a consultant to talk through how membership will work best for you. It's really easy to set it up wrong and it's a really a nightmare if you do that. Um, I'm not watching the chat, so if anything comes up, then um, feel free to um, chuck it into me. Oh, there's four things in there. It's okay, Phil, I'm looking at the chat, so I'll bump you if there's something we need you. Thanks so much. Um, another thing, this is a pro and a con, so much functionality, so much. Like there is, it's such a dense program. There's things in there that I didn't even know happen uh, to, um, to do that. Uh, sorry, there's things in there that I don't even know um, how to do. And occasionally someone will come in from somewhere else and show me and I go, wow, I didn't even know that you could turn that on. Um, that's a pro and a con. You can get really lost in it and you can get too excited and start to overcomplicate your work. Um, I'm a real fan of trying to keep things as simple as possible or following a principle of data austerity um, and trying to keep things like as less is more when it comes to data, otherwise you've got too much to clean. Um, dubious ethics, jump on DuckDuckGo or whatever your non-Google search engine is and type in Nation Builder and ethics and zero results because there are none. It's a capitalist company that um, will sell um, to Trump, it will sell to right-wing companies, um, but there are networks of people. Um, so there's Facebook groups called Progressive Australia and New Zealand Nation Builder users. So you can kind of segment out and have fun with people who are progressing in the space, but there are no ethics in Nation Builder. Um, hello there. Okay, that's the end of that list then. So there's more things, and I'd be really interested to hear um, Ariane's take on it as well as someone who has jumped out of it. Um, I feel really locked into it. Um, because I work with a large network of people who have access and most of them are volunteer and to get an organization from where previously the database for a lot of our groups was just a Gmail uh, list um, into um, a sophisticated platform that does CRM, CMS, digital campaigning um, has been um, a coup d'etat for our organization and really lifted up a lot of our campaigns and so increased our fundraising. So the website system is an absolute nightmare. Before you jump Why? in, Phil, Why? we just got two questions on oh, the yep. chat for pricing. Yep. Yes. Uh, why would you use the expensive version? What's the advantage? It just means you get more functionality, um, particularly between that first tier and the second tier is the difference between getting membership systems activated or not. So um, that's just one example. But the more people that you have, it just will take you up to a certain level eventually as well. Does the regular donation with free Zapier work okay now? Uh, what does that mean, sorry? Do you want to clarify that, Glenn? Oh, that was coming from Kate. Oh. Do you want to speak, Kate? Yeah, we um, had regular, we were trying to get regular donations. I, I, oh, do you mean with Stripe? Yeah, with Stripe. Oh, so no, what Nation Builder has very cleverly done as a capitalist enterprise is create their own payment gateway system. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah, that one. Yeah, so, um, and that actually works quite well, sadly. Um, the reporting is a little bit of a nightmare and they take a little bit of time to give um, some of the things, which is a bit of a nightmare um, when you get into the finance system things of, of things, but you can make it work. Um, and if you jump onto their payment system, everything works surprisingly really well. And they do deal with um, what has been an ongoing problem with Nation Builder in terms of phishing scams and um, scripts being run on donation pages, especially through PayPal, which leads you getting out. Um, that has been, that security hole has never been plugged by Nation Builder. And I'm gonna put my cynical hat on and say like, it conveniently happened a lot when they launched their new payment system. Okay. <laughs> so um, the, the website stuff is a bit of a um, nightmare and you will need to um, approach um, professional developers and coders to get a system off the ground. The free things that are available um, are okay, but they look pretty clunky and they're difficult to customize. Um, what is great is once you've got your um, website set up, 
is the number of templates and different things that you can build really quickly and easily um, are great. So there's basic pages, there's the basic page blogs, calendars. Um, of course, you can sell event tickets. It's a little bit clunky, um, but it's workable. Um, donation pages, event pages, petitions, sign up pages, volunteer sign up pages, but wait, there's more. Um, and all of these things as well. Um, you can be really clever and do um, some customized work in those templates and make those things like things like money bombs. I've never used one, but um, you can make it work for you in a way if you're clever, but it is really about understanding coding um, to get it all to work for you. So it is a hyper complex system. Um, I'll quickly jump into communication. I'm really conscious of time. I could talk about this for seven hours, probably just on the cons of Nation Builder a lot, but there are a lot of pros. I shouldn't be so negative. Um, the communication stuff um, has really gone from absolutely unusable to um, quite good now. Um, so um, you can set up different broadcasters, associate your, um, your uh, domain with it, and generally like the um, sendability has been quite good. Um, there used to be quite a lot of problems with blacklisting of domains and um, because they use a share IP address, um, you could get um, all sorts of issues importing in from other people who you share that IP address with. But a lot of that has been sorted out and isn't so bad. The email blast system is quite good. It's simple, but I hate MailChimp, which might be controversial, because it's too complicated and it makes people make really ugly three column emails. Like that's over. It's all about simplicity and like simple, like, don't even put your logo on there. I hate all that, whatever, um, my personal opinion. You get really great um, email metrics. You can do A, B subject line and sender testing, schedule emails, um, blah, blah, blah. Let's have a look at this one. I can't send because this is a test one, but the metrics are quite good and really useful. Um, the content, it's a little bit weird, but once you get used to it, it's okay. There's a WYSIWYG over on the right-hand side. And as you make changes, um, and then save it, it updates with a um, thing on the side. So it's very similar to MailChimp, or the last time I used it anyway. You can add in all sorts of merge fields and tables, and tables are terrible in email, don't do it. Images, buttons, and things like that. Um, the smart field stuff is powerful as, if you've got really good um, clean data. So I use that for a fix for my um, automated um, summary receipts at the end of the year. You can add in custom fields and things like that. So it's really, really cool. Um, and the recipient section is where it's really great. It, it allows you to use the three different main ways of segmenting data to, um, to segment your data for your email. So that list, that static snapshot in time, tags those relationship moments. So if someone's RSVP to an event, you can schedule a reminder. Filters, so having dynamic searches. So I might know that I wanna send an email in three weeks, but I can set a dynamic filter that will update as the information changes within the data as well. So that's really powerful. Um, yeah, A-B testing mentioned that. Workflows is a new, and I'm a, part, I, I'm a big believer in beta testing everything because um, like Bess was saying, that's how you get the changes that you want to the software. Um, and the automations and workflows have been working really well. So they're about um, email journeys for people, um, particularly useful if you're using Facebook lead ads um, and thinking about how do you onboard people or reactivating um, old data and thinking about um, sunshine clauses and things like that with your email lists. Um, finances section is magnificent actually like we have a very complex system in friends of the earth um, of tracking finances for um, autonomously functioning groups with their individual budgets so tracking is really useful with the tracking codes um, and they create great triggers for zaps and things to get you into your finance systems um, you can see um, it gives you um, a full uh, filter or search so you can create reports really easy and export them as CSVs, whack them into your finance systems. Um, all pretty easy to do. The tracking codes are really great. Um, I find them very, very helpful. The payouts relates to um, the fees and charges, which are equivalent to Stripe fees and charges that the Nation Builder payment system does. And if you have recurring donations, which um, why wouldn't you? Then um, if you're using Nation Builder Payments, they've set it up so it's easy to track uh, failing donations, which previously was a massive problem and gaping hole in the Nation Builder system. Uh, I'll quickly show you memberships. So you can set up a thousand classes of membership in here, which is really um, useful in some ways. 
Um, and you can set up uh, automated uh, reminders for people, so auto responses as they're called, to do um, expiry warnings um, if someone's having failed payments um, on their credit cards or if their membership's expired as well. And they're fully customizable and you can use the um, liquid code and um, merge codes and things in there to set conditions if you're a super nerd. Um, easy to make a report as well with a downloadable CSV. And there was one other thing that I really wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, my favorite thing in Nation Builder, and then I'll stop, um, is map view. So geographical segmenting of data with like clickable links around areas, which like is just like, mwah! although it's slightly clunky still, but it just is so much better than Googling um, area codes and things like that, trying to figure out what seat is where. Um, but Nation Builder will map based on the address data that you have um, where people are. Um, and then you can use what's called a turf cut to um, generate a list based on a um, physically drawn area, which is powerful AF. Fini, is there any more questions? Beautiful. Yeah, I'd also just want to add to, to that as a, a web developer and also somebody who thinks websites are key, is a nation builder doesn't play with other websites very well. WordPress, um, Squarespace, et cetera, et cetera. You can get data from WordPress into um, Nation Builder, but it's it's complex and it's limited. And to build a custom website in Nation Builder, it's really weird. They should have a, um, a page builder, but they don't. So you need to use old fashioned ways of building things that we were doing many years ago, and that's using code. So generally you're looking at sort of four to 12 grand for website build if you want a high-end website in Nation Builder. So that's a, quite a, a, also an additional cost. To bear that in mind. I, I will say though, um, since Nation Builder has uh, got on board with um, Zapier, it is easy to set up automations through WordPress and Gravity Forms and things yeah. like that to get in um, a thing. So since that integration has happened, then um, the bridges between third-party apps has yep. gotten better. So beautiful. I was just going to say, like, we only paid thirty-six dollars a month. We, I never even realized there was a more expensive version so you know but which program kate the nation builder so i wouldn't consider yeah. that expensive i mean i'll have a look at the other one to see if there's anything it does but the legacy plans on nation builder are pretty affordable the new plans are crazy yeah well that's 36 a month uh no but like as soon as you get more than like a thousand or two thousand or something it's a very small number as soon as you get more than that it, it gets very expensive very quickly <laughs> I think it was 5,000, wasn't it? On your screen share, it said 5,000. Maybe. But if you, but with Nation Builder, it also pulls in all your digital social media followers and stuff, so you can get... Yeah, it's got that turned off. 1,000 email addresses. Yeah, the, the people scale and also the emailable scale, and it's you've got to keep a good eye on both of them because it's easy just to end up with all these shadow accounts and then duplicates it's designed to make duplicates for some reason yeah, yeah. So, yeah we're nowhere near five thousand so. all righty so we've got uh, it's 309 so um let's hand over to ariane to one of my favorite apps which is action network and this is what i'm using for action skills so i would have sent you the update for this webinar via that system how long am I speaking for, Glenn, just to clarify? Uh, around about half an hour, but we're running a little bit over. That's fine. I'll keep it a bit under that. Um, wonderful. Hi, everyone. I am going to share my screen um, shortly and go through um, a few things that we're doing on Action Network. Um, please keep the questions coming. But um, a very quick introduction again. Uh, my name is Ariane. I work at Essential Media. We're a consultancy, so we work with all not-for-profits. Um, anything left of centre, basically unions, um, alliances, we work um, on things like Every Australian Counts and Everybody's Home, so big uh, cross organisational platforms. Feel free to email me, call me um, if you want to talk about anything. Um, so I'm going through Action Network and it's a very simple pro and con list before I go into um, Action Network and give a demonstration. The pros are it's relatively cheap. Um, so using us dollars it is free if you just sign up and don't want customized um, headers or 
um, emails and don't want to be able to upload lists. You just want to like build a grassroots list. Um, but once you do want a um, to do a bit more of that, it's still only a minimum of ten dollars a month, and then it's a uh, dollar per thousand emails sent per month. So if you have a list of say a hundred thousand, but only send half of that list an email once a month, it's fifty dollars US dollars. Um, you know, it's for a lot of the smaller orgs, it's really affordable. Um, there's also ways to scale it up. So they can do networks, which is when you have like a, say an Australia wide um, organization, and then you want say a South Australian, a WA, a New South Wales, a Queensland um, ch children orgs, and they share lists and there's permissions and that works really well. Um, it's a real benefit of action network. Um, but uh, importantly, that does get, that starts at about $100 a month is my understanding. Um, it's really easy to sign up. You literally, I created a sandbox account that I'll use as a demonstration within about five minutes yesterday. Um, but you do have to manually apply for a paid account um, when you want to uh, sort of upgrade. Um, then one thing that I think compared to Nation Builder is really good. It's only really open to progressives. So where Nation Builder helped get Trump elected, Action Network has a uh, much more ethical side to it. Um, they work, they come from the progressive sphere in the US. So it is a US based and there's a few little issues around that, but most are able to get through it. And um, they work with progressive orgs uh, and are really good in that way. They're not going to be quite as responsive as, as um, Raisley and the Kepler team, um, but they are pretty good if there's problems. Um, an a company called uh, Pro uh, Principal Co um, are now ha are the official representatives of them in Australia. So you can also go through them if you've got issues. Um, it's got a good, pretty basic structure, which I'll go through. And then um, there's an integrated, and it integrates an email system into it, which is not always the, um, the case, but it is for this one. Um, there are some major cons though. Um, so with the things, it's not integrated to a website. So while there are some basic pages, so they can do basic forms and donation pages on a sort of action network website. Um, it's not a full thing like Nation Builder. It's not integrated. And a lot of people coming from Nation Builder kind of get a little bit confused with that. Uh, so you, there are costs involved, but I've set up a couple of just square spaces. So you're talking $15, $30 a month for a Squarespace website um, and integrated the forms of Action Network pretty easily in. So um, whether you're using a WordPress, Squarespace or Wix, any of those sort of really self build websites or a custom build one, they're really good. Um, the sign up for the paid accounts not yet automated, but they are moving towards that. So that's not really a big issue. The other main thing I found that kind of confused people um, is that there's no organizing features. So something I really like about Nation Builder is that it's that full functionality that if you have like called someone, you can note down, I called this person at this time and had this outcome. So they answered the phone, they didn't answer the phone. Um, we answered the phone and talked about X. Um, and then you can actually pull a list of everyone that has been called in the last six months and had a phone conversation with. What I find is that 99% of orgs don't use that full functionality. And I love it when they do. I absolutely love it. I'm an organizer. Um, well, my background is an organizer and it would be amazing if all orgs had that level of capability but um, they don't. Majority of it is more digital. So this is a more digital only tool. You're talking about emails, you're talking about donations. You can log some stuff in custom fields and write notes on individual people, but it's not quite the same. So I do really encourage um, orgs that like, it's not, it's not there for, for a really grassroots ground-based campaign, um, but most people don't do that even when they want to. Um, and like any system, it does take a little while to get used to, but I find for the most part, it's actually really good. So going through a demonstration, this is just a sandbox account I created yesterday uh, under the name of Essential Media. So when you log in, this is kind of the main page that comes up. You get some statistics. It does a graph over time. You can see the size, which is really good. Um, and then the you can click through and have a look at action. So I've just created a test fundraiser and a form, but you can also create petitions and letter writing to your MPs and all of those will appear here. Um, you can hide them if they're like a, an old one you don't need to see anymore. And so you can have dozens here and look through all yours, keep an eye on action takers and either duplicate it or edit um, or manage once it's published. 
here you get to see a list of your emails. You can see I've just created one test one. Um, they're really easy to create and edit. Um, if you're coming from something like Nation Builder, uh, there's a similar sort of structure. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I should have some time to come back and go through them. There's a whole bunch of, um, you can pull a bunch of reports which are useful. You can then have, have a look through um, all your activists here. I have to say I've never really used the discussion board, but it's there if you want to use it. And then you can add lots of different organisers. So you can see I've got um, myself as a logged in as a central media or I've actually added myself as well. So you can have different admins or organisers and let their different levels of permission are really interesting. So you've got a whole bunch of options for them. So that's good. Um, then from there, um, you can have a look at invitations and settings. This is um, a really important one. So you can do some general settings. Uh, you want some really basic defaults, things like default country Australia. Uh, I find a bunch of Australian orgs I work with on Action Network don't realise that, and that's really annoying. Default language, it's obvious. Um, but having default uh, names and email, so otherwise it defaults to Info at Action Network, and you don't want to accidentally send an email out from Info at Action Network. Um, so there's a whole range of just default things like Twitter, donation settings, um, failed email sort of things there um, that are pretty easy to set up. Um, and then you can do a quick start of things here. But the main menu actually is a little bit of a weird one. You have to click up here and you've got all this information. There's a lot to go through. So you can start a petition, um, you can organise an event or a ticketed events. One of the big criticisms that hasn't been an issue for me, but I have heard from multiple other people, is you can't do both free and paid tickets. It has to either be paid tickets or free. Um, and so uh, you might need to create two different events, one where anyone who get a free ticket registers on the free one and others um, paid. I don't know if that's something they're going to fix, but hopefully, because it does sound like it's caused some issues from some of the Australian orgs. Forms are very sort of similar. It's just collecting the basic information you want and you can customise them. Um, letter campaigns, while they're called letters, it's like actions, email your MP. Um, it's not set up automatically to do Australia, but there's plenty of people out there with the Australian data. You just need to borrow that off, borrow, ask someone for that um, in any of the Facebook groups and they will give it to you and you can literally just give it straight to Action Network and then they'll set up. It. So they, they should have all the data for federal, but some of the state ones are not there yet. The core campaigns are not in Australia yet, but let's, fingers crossed, they'll be coming soon. Um, and then the fundraising settings there. You can also just add some files and look at your different groups. So um, you can manage multiple groups um, in one go. So for different organisations or potentially different, if for some reason you have to split up different audiences within um, one organisation, whether that's a state-based thing or something else, um, delineating two groups that shouldn't be in the same database. Um, then you've got for the individual people, so that's actions there. For individual people, you can, can look at the... Just quickly while you're um, on the events. Um, yeah. I've got a question come, th some questions come through. Um, can you do pay what you want option? Oh, actually, I've never tried. That's a very good event. That I don't think so. Um, no, you've got ticket types. Yeah, you can, you can choose the ticket type, the name, the cost. Um, but they can't, yeah, not, no, it looks like, but that would be a very good thing to ask for. And from Phil, um, can you do letter campaigns for contact forms for MPs, like Do Gooder? Uh, yes, so that should be under here. Um, and you can set it up here and choose what, um, who you're actually gonna target. So you need to set up a target list. They have the default US ones, but you can specifically request Australian ones, but you need to give them the data. As I said, that you just need to get that data. It's floating around the progressive sphere. People have it, um, but you do need to get that and send it to Action Network. Um, I'm hoping they're looking at integrating it in. I have heard that, but I haven't, I don't know a timeline. Can I just follow that up really quickly, Ariane? With uh, so like Scott Morrison doesn't monitor his email address. Does it fill in his contact form for by the? No, 
So I know that that's a good thing that do gooder does. No, it doesn't. It's there's a few um, uh, the front bench. My understanding of ministers who have forms and it won't do that. Again, things to talk about, but yeah, it's not quite that sophisticated. Um, wonderful. So they're the actions. Then under people, emails are. Let's go through and make an email. So this is the one I'll do. You, this is just your title that just appears on your list and you can actually go through, put a subject line in um, and do whatever you want. You can do multiple subject lines, so do A-B testing. You can also A-B test the from, so your name, um, so info at essential media, um, and then the preview text. Use a built-in wrapper. When you pay for the account, you can build plenty of different email wrappers and then type in and you can do the things like uh, not snippets, sorry, clips. Clips is like, I want to add a first name or um, highest previous contribution or um, a call campaigns information or event information. So you could have like 30 events set up for a, an action day across Australia and you can actually send them their nearest event details and nearest event schedule or a whole bunch of stuff about which one is near them or ones they've RSVP'd to. So it's got a huge amount of customization in that, which is really useful. Could build if else box, um, custom field values, uh, date, time, all that sort of stuff. So there's lots of information in there, which is really useful. And then you can do the basics, formatting, lists, images, tables, links, etc. Um, so you can save and target your email. It takes you along the journey, similar to a sort of nation builder or my understanding of the other ones, where it will. So you've gone from manage email, write the email, target the email. And you can say, I want to include, now unfortunately states are US based, so you do have to do it on um, postal codes. Um, I might say, I want everyone who's been tagged with a certain thing, but not people who have been tagged with something else. So I don't have any tags yet, but lots of customization in that to include and exclude. And I really, I enjoy that a lot. Um, so people with custom fields. So um, I worked with a political party and we had branch members and um, you know, what federal electorate they're in. We put all that in field values and said anyone in this one, but not people who are in that one. And that was really useful. So you go through, you hit save, preview and send, and then you get to a preview page at the moment. I'm not targeting anyone in particular. And it shows you the preview. It tells you how many are there and you can hit send or hit schedule, which is really useful. Um, so schedule there or send it. Um, that's setting up an email. It's pretty straightforward. Um, then you've also got uh, ladders. So if someone joins on a particular form, wait 24 hours, then send them a particular email, depending on what they do, do X or Y. It's a ladder of engagement. It's really useful. Um, pull reports, which is a sort of static list. Create a query, which uh, is sort of like a filter in Nation Builder. Um, so a saved set of, sort of like a saved report almost, but for detail, it will keep updating the details. Or you could look up an individual activist or create, just upload a CSV of new activists. So looking at um, individual um, activists, um, I should be in there myself. Let's, no, okay, um, let's add a new activist then. So let's put myself in. Um, so there's, you put these, your details in, your location, you can choose a custom field or create new custom fields. This could be something like um, preference of ice cream. I am vanilla. And then you save and you actually pull it up. Oh, that's okay. Um, it's now being weird about already having someone there. That's fine. Um, let's do that again. Yep, there we go. So now it pulls up my full profile. At any time I can just unsubscribe this person here. I can also just edit their details here, or I can look through and I'll be getting a full list of what emails they've been sent, whether they've received them, whether they've opened them and whether they've actually clicked on the link, which is really useful. Um, mobile message history, again, not Australia, but hopefully soon. 
action history. So what, what groups they're part of. And it will also go through like tags, donations, custom fields. Um, all, and you can also just add a bunch of notes to it somewhat as well. So if you were saying calling people, you could just write a note about the call you just had. You just couldn't filter by that note, unlike a nation builder where you could. Um, so that's an individual person and it's a really clear way to see them. Um, I really like that setup. It's straightforward. It tells you what you need to know. And then details. So there are all the like more complicated things. You can create tags. So every time you create a form, when someone comes through that form, you can have it so it um, it tags them you know, with three separate tags. Um, you can create questions and custom fields. So that's when someone fills in a form, you know, what is your favorite flavor? Um, you know, are you active in, you know, a political party? What are you doing? Um, custom targets is where you'll put in the custom targets for the letter campaigns. Um, email wrappers and layouts is where you build your nice email headers. Uh, and then page wrappers are sort of similar for those internal action network pages for forms and other things. You can write a bunch of code um, and you can actually build some APIs in that. Um, then here's just, there's the knowledge base is quite extensive. I find myself being very like confused, being like, I noticed the way to do X and the knowledge base mostly tells you. Um, and they're pretty good on email support. Um, and there's lots of different how she videos for training, which is very useful. Um, that's the like the short version of it to, to sort of show you around. Um, I feel like it's been going for 20 minutes. I've got plenty of time for questions. Are there anything in particular people want to know? Any more? Let's have a look at that chat. Um, I think that's... Uh, Someone's asked, uh, how can you delete activists? Um, uh, yes, so um, when you're in a someone's uh, account, you can just have a look. Uh, you can just Mostly I don't delete, um, you can merge them, but if you just unsubscribe them, um, that's a good question if you can actually delete. I'm not sure, Glenn, are you aware of whether you can delete someone completely? I can assume you just go edit and literally change all the details, um, but I've only ever had to unsubscribe people. Because if you delete them, then they might pop up again by accident, where if you've unsubscribed them, you won't contact them again. Yeah, I think they want to keep them in the database because if they've unsubscribed and then you manually add them, um, or through an old list or something, you want to make sure that they remain unsubscribed. So, um, how do you integrate with the website? Very good point. Sorry. All right, let's go and have a look at our um, actions. So, you pull up an action of some sort. In this case, I'll use this form. You just go into the form, and in this form, you can do a whole bunch of things, including edit what you're asking. So what are the things asked? Um, and you just click this bit of code here and paste that somewhere um, in your website. Uh, it kind of comes up not fantastic. Um, I would recommend just getting a little bit of code to make it look a little bit nicer from a developer. Um, it's There's a few different ways here as well. You can choose what size you want it um, or you can have layout styles or stand. There's a few different sort of standard sizes and you have to work out what you want it to look like. Um, and Glenn is very helpful saying there is a WordPress plugin. Yes. So, so drop that standard styles down. Yep. Well, it says no styles. So if you, if you go layout styles only on your donation form, then that means you can bring that, you can then use your website CSS. So that's the bit I was talking to you about before. So in that case, then you embed that form and then you can, in your parent website, you can then use your CSS. So I, I find um, that I can customize the forms 100% as a developer, which is good because they have things like bits and pieces that you don't want. Um, so you just uh, display none with CSS. Yeah, and then yes, the Action Network supports custom fields. So similar as I was just doing the 
ice cream flavor there that's a custom field and you can make as many of those as you need into whatever topics you want um you can determine whether that's people choose from a drop down list or if it's meant to be a number or a letter for forcing um, a certain type of character um yeah i think that i'm looking through the questions i can't see anything else um sorry I've, someone said I've got a question but, for you yeah so you mentioned it. principal co so i assume that's principalco.com.au is the official support or is that yeah the they're just sort of like the australian um they will help from the Australian end. So you, you should go through them first. If there are any issues, they can also help just go to directly. Um, yeah. So that's uh, Daniel Stoner and Sophia Madden. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other questions about functionality or how it works? Um, you know, you can just edit tags here and create a new tag. So it's pretty straightforward. This is like, form one and save that and then I save it to any time anyone fills in this particular form um, they will be tagged with form one and so for instance this is how it will look here you can put a header you can put some details here um, and then if I'm not logged in so let's look at that in an incognito mode there we go. So this is what it will ask. And you can remove the goal slider if you don't want. And it automatically keeps upping as people get closer to the one. And then you can edit what this button says. So submit or join or whatever. And then you put your one here as, um, as the sponsored one. So it doesn't. And then if you have the paid account, you can affix page headers, um, page wrappers, sorry, they call them. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, that was awesome. I even learned a few things there and I used the tool quite a bit. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump to David Paris and David's worked on a lot of um, different campaigns using different tools. And he's going to do a super fast turbo overview of some other apps and some other bits and pieces, just um, in addition to what we've been talking about. So over to you, David. Thanks, Glenn. Um, I don't have screenshots or, or test accounts to, to show everybody, but I might just sort of quickly run, just run through uh, the ones that were on the, on the link page there. Basically, these tools are divided up into, they, they do one of uh, three or four functions. They do advocacy, advocacy and work as a, uh, as a CRM. Uh, or advocacy, uh, a CRM and a CMS as well. Um, there, yeah. So the different different ones are, have have different strengths. So let's start with salsa. Uh, and with the big caveat on salsa is that the last time I used it was very US centric and would take a fair bit of of heavy user input to get. Uh, to get it to work in the Australian context. My understanding is that it's improved considerably in that regard, uh, in both the user friendliness uh, and, and the native data, but I haven't seen it for myself, so I couldn't say, couldn't say for certain. Uh, Salsa is a, is a strong CRM and it's a strong uh, engagement tool. So you can do your, uh, do your action forms, your uh, social asks, build a content rich email that then asks a supporter to contact their member of parliament or um, contact their friends. Uh, it's got uh, integrated uh, donor management tools as well. So you can do everything inside that, that ecosystem, save for the, the website content itself. So much like Action Network, you need to have an existing site to, uh, to, to tack it on to. Um, my suggestion for people shopping around for, for these tools would be to get a demo and see if it does have enough uh, native uh, Australianized uh, function to, to work for you. Because uh, it can be quite, quite a cost effective tool to add on to an existing onto an existing site. 
Uh, similar to that is engaging networks. Um, it's very similar to, uh, to action network in the sense that it is got some, it's got some basic uh, CRM tools so you can manage uh, pieces of information around your, uh, around your supporters. Uh, doesn't go too deeply into, into that function, uh, but for most organisations it's sufficient. Uh, you can tag users, you can uh, record their interactions and, uh, and group them accordingly, people who opened an email or who took this particular action, all those sorts of things are uh, natively on there. They've done a better job of Australianising their tools and they're quite user friendly in uploading your own data set to, to aim people at. Um, but again, no content management at all, so you need to uh, I guess just as nation builders a good a good starting point for people that are starting a campaign completely from scratch uh, and you need everything uh, engaging networks I've seen a couple of cases where it's been used really well for organizations that were sort of community based or very analog and needed to uh, add uh, some digital advocacy capability to to an already existing brand, and it was uh, it was very good for that and quite cost effective too. Uh, like Action Network for a large list, it can be cheaper than dedicated email tools like like Mailchimp, um, and then you get all the other functionality as a bonus. Um, so two others to to consider. Salesforce is has no advocacy tools, no content management, nothing at all. It's the most powerful CRM uh, of all the tools we've discussed, uh, but it's kind of orders of magnitude more expensive, even for the not-for-profit versions. Um, it's really heavily based around uh, a user journey on keeping tabs on every single thing that that supporter does uh, and driving them to, to donate uh, and then to organise them in a really uh, in really complex ways, so you can you can drill down into into really complex and sophisticated uh, relationships between supporters, between supporters and organisations. Uh, in in most cases, it's overkill because you need dedicated teams of people to to get anything out of it at all. Um, it was originally a, a commercial tool, so it's um, it's designed to to coordinate huge scale uh, marketing uh, exercises. It's uh, yeah, it's exceptionally powerful, but also really really heavy and hard to to use. So only really suitable for the most well resourced of, of organisations. Um, <clears throat> So, new mode is, uh, is starting to get more widely used in Australia. It's uh, an advocacy tool only, so no, no CRM, no, no CMS. It's it's purely for uh, for adding advocacy tools to an already existing email list. So, if you've got a, a functioning Mailchimp, say, and you want to uh, you want to add on the, the ability to uh, engage your supporters to uh, take an action, uh, contact their MP or anything of that sort. It's a, it's a great tool for that. Uh, their stuff is localised really nicely. Um, and I think every single one of their tools, you can now target uh, Australian decision makers within it, which is, which is great. Uh, they're a good ethical choice too, like much like Action Network, they're only available to progressive organisations. You need to uh, agree to a, a set of um, a set of principles that, that says basically you, uh, <clears throat> you're going to actively work to uh, prevent prejudice and, and things of that sort, uh, rather than, um, as we've discussed, to help Donald Trump get elected. Um, and it was originally founded by somebody from uh, an advocacy uh, background. Uh, it was built as, as in-house tools for 
uh, Digital Rights Watch's uh, Canadian equivalent open media and then uh, has since become a, uh, a more broadly used uh, advocacy tool for a lot of organisations in North America and in Europe and, and increasingly here. Um, they do, one of the unusual things that Umo does is they do faxes, which is like hilariously old school, but also uh, has a real tangible impact on, on MPs because there's a, you know, there's a physical uh, impact to, to the work you're doing. So there's all this uh, paper piling up and uh, sends, um, sends uh, liberal office managers a bit mad, which is always entertaining. Um, but yeah, a, a good tool for, for adding on to, if you're already well established, have a good email list and a, and a good workflow and, and, and function, but uh, not so good for managing donations, uh, your, your content, managing your, managing your users. It integrates really well with, uh, with other tools, but doesn't, doesn't do it all itself. And I guess the, finally, the polar opposite of that is um, is city CRM. Um, it's it's the most ethical choice, and it's the best not-for-profit tool there is. With one humongous caveat, in that you need to do it all yourself, every little thing. Um, it's open source. You can install it anywhere, so your data is secure and safely tucked away from from prying eyes. If that's where you want to host your server. Uh, anything any of the other tools can do, it can do, provided you've got somebody that knows how to code it to, to do it. Uh, think of it like WordPress, but without a vibrant community of people building modules and themes and, and other functions. It's, um, it, it's extraordinarily difficult to get up and running, but if you have... Um, if you have the resources to do it, it can be great. It can be really powerful and, and really comprehensive. It's a, it's a solid uh, CRM. It's, it can be uh, turned into a solid email or a solid advocacy tool. Uh, yeah, I think there's three, Glenn, I can't, I can't remember. Um, uh, and a bunch of private vendors uh, will, uh, you know, and and um, and consultants may uh, may help with it, but it's yeah the overheads on it are, are humongous. Um, so to my mind, uh, the the trade off just just isn't worth it um, if you can resource it appropriately and your user case is so niche that you can't get any of the other off the shelf stuff to to work for you. It's almost the only choice, but. Um, it would be a, an option of last resort to, to my mind if you're shopping around for uh, for a tool, um, unless you've got uh, the money to throw at it. Um, the price on new mode, Kate's question. I don't know what the most recent Australian pricing is. Last I saw it was quite uh, quite cost effective. I think they've gone back to a, a model of uh, uh, like a contact them for a quote rather than a, a dedicated uh, a pricing structure. But let me have a quick look. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, it depends on your, uh, on your actions. Um, so, so if you've got a single live action and you don't want a range of the the functional features attached to it. You only want to be able to do petitions and emails and, and tweets. It's uh, 149 US a month. The more substantial one where you can do uh, all of the things is considerably more expensive. Um, I think there is some room to negotiate within that if you have uh, some needs that fall between any of their structured ones. So I'll, I'll drop that link in the, in the chat. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to throw into the mix is that um, very, uh, very self-serving, but Salsa have an interesting kind of comparison shop page for, you know, why, 
uh, what they offer that other tools don't, and it includes a bunch of the tools we've talked about here. So um, it's a yeah, it's very self-serving of them to to post, but it, it does give you a, a kind of a useful in, intro into what some tools do and, and don't do. And as you see on that link, there's a bunch of other ones that we that we haven't got to because. Uh, as discussed earlier, the US market is so overwhelmingly where people dedicate their, their time and resources. Uh, so we, a bunch of these tools just do not work for, for us here. Sorry, I, Glenn, I ended up sending it to, directly to Kate instead of everybody. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's a super quick rundown of, of some of those. Um, I can go into more detail about any of them. Uh, yeah, my experience is a bit out of date on some of them, but yeah, happy to talk more if, if it's useful. Do, do we have any uh, questions from the floor? Yeah, David, um, could you just uh, elaborate a little bit more about the limitations of um, CIVI CRM and particular, you know, the type of coding required and uh, scope that a little bit, please, for setting up for a grassroots organisation who doesn't have a CRM at the moment and doesn't have a lot of fun, you know, funding to be able to, you know, buy things um, at this stage. Sure. Um, the... The, the broad explanation is every single thing that all the other tools do, you have to pay for with, with CVCRM. So you need to pay for a web host. You need to install it and configure the databases. You need to uh, then configure the installation to, to your specific needs. And then if it doesn't do what you want it to do out of the box, you need to you need to code that into the into the tool itself and that can be using a module system similar to things like like WordPress uh, but that they're quite thin on the ground so a bunch of that needs to be done by by somebody that knows PHP well that knows uh, SQL well um, that uh, yeah that can be that can be built out and then there's the the question around getting somebody to to build something like that where it's managing something as delicate as uh, as users and supporters personal information uh, the risks that come with that in not having it uh, exposed to a, a robust testing environment are, are really high so um, doing it all in-house is it's certainly possible there are organizations that do it but to, to resource it means having uh, staff that are dedicated to, uh, to maintaining the server infrastructure and then dedicated to maintaining the code base as well, which is, um, yeah, a really substantial load. Um, and, and those sort of skills, uh, you know, build out at three figures an hour most of the time. So, um, yeah, hard to, if you've got volunteers that can do it, fantastic. And, and it can work pretty well for, for small-scale um, organisations where they've got someone that is, is happy to invest that kind of time. But it's, um, yeah, the, the workload is considerable. Thank you. Can I, can I add on, um, we tried it about eight years ago and everything was working wonderfully because we did have a group of volunteers who were able to do it. But the moment they went away, it all fell over and it was an absolute nightmare. Like so, and to, to get it back up would have cost us a heap of money and, and thus begins my long and tortured relationship with Nation Builder. But yeah, so word of warning, <laughs> it can be very like catastrophic for an organization to have it fall over um, and not know what to do about it. The thing I'm just I with, with a lot of these is that this, what you're paying with developer hours is what sort of been distributed costs all the costs when you're using any of the other solutions. So whether it's Action Network or Nation Builder or anything else, those developers have all done that work, but rather than having to do it for you individually, they've been able to do it in a way that sort of economies of scale. 
I just got a message from Greg asking about um, the Kepler pricing for Kepler and more info there. I just double checked on their website and um, they've pulled down their pricing plans now and just put up a, um, you know, our plans start at $100 a month and to contact sales. Um, so my thinking is that might possibly be because they want to filter people in and try and put them into Raisley. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Um, so I've got a question for everybody and probably following on from the previous question is that if you're an organization that doesn't have much tech, tech resources, you're sort of campaigners and you just want to get in there and start doing the things, what would be the best system to, to do that with? Um, sorry if I've missed it already, but have we talked about the sort of just email programs yet? Just oh, really straightforward. We, we did like, miss that. Yeah. So, so we, you know, we set up a very off the shelf, very quick thing. As soon as the um, lockdown happened, uh, we started a thing called Australia Together. And despite being a fairly large, well-resourced um, organisation, for the most part, we wanted something really quick and easy. And we just used MailChimp. It's great. Uh, and it was just able, like, we're able to get a few thousand people on a list in the matter of a couple of weeks by offering um, lunchtime Zoom sessions with some really prominent people. And so it's been really interesting just using Squarespace and MailChimp. So it's costing us, I don't know exactly, maybe like 50 or something dollars a month for a few thousand people on a list um, combined with the website and the MailChimp. We also use Campaign Monitor quite a bit for a lot of clients that don't need a full CRM. And, you know, I think the costs, Action Network is pretty similar in costs, but if you want a really simple email tool and don't need to track much else, just go with an email list program that's my pitch yeah glenn i reckon that the answer to that question depends a lot on what they've already got in place as well like if you've got if you're starting from scratch and you have absolutely nothing uh and you need to to do something all in one then an all-in-one tool like like nation builder comes into consideration but if you've got an existing website and or you've got uh, an existing email list then then some of the other tools are, are probably better options it um it kind of depends on, on on what you've got in place and and even um even if the if the ask is just one one simple thing um then you don't need to go to all the trouble of, of getting a, an advocacy tool. Um, as I am said, you can just do a, just do an email tool and, and you're, you're good to go. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard to sort of say, I, I'd pick this one without, um, I guess, without the, the context of, of what they've already got up and running. Yeah, and I'll just add to that, we made a big fuss at the last webinar, uh, organising people with databases, is the importance of briefing. And if you don't have a very tight, specific brief and you're not asking the right questions, you're going to get the wrong answers in a world of pain. Because um, all these tools are complex, no matter as simple as, as they are. I mean, they could potentially be, they've still got their complexities. You really need the right tool, you need to have the right brief. Yeah, do and that's something to consider as well when you're selecting it as well is remember that moving into the system means that there will come new problems and new tasks and new things that need to be done in order to maintain a clean database. They don't just maintain themselves. They're like a garden. You've got to go and tend to them, um, remove the weeds, um, clean it up, um, harvest when you need to and all those sorts of things. So it's, it's things to think about. I love that yeah, analogy. I would say, yeah, I would say, you know, on the whole, I've found Raisley easy, pretty, really easy to use, um, much easier than Kepler. Um, it is simpler, but um, I think that's also because it does have a little bit less functionality. Um, but I think for, you know, setting up with not much, it'd be easy to do um, as long as you were happy to forgo having some of those good organising action-y tools that it lacks.
Okay, like I had written a few questions in preparation, but we've actually answered them all during the, the session. So would, would anyone uh, like to either ask some questions or uh, make some extra comments about bits and pieces? All right, well. Kate's, Kate's got a question. Oh, okay. Go Kate. Kate, no, you just gotta Kate. unmute yourself. Sorry. Uh, we use MailChimp for media lists and a lot of, uh, you know, in any generic addresses get rejected. When you say generic, um, what are you meaning? Like, oh shit, I can't even think. Not admin at, but um, yeah. Well, basically, you know, when you, when you try to, so like an info at organization or something. Yeah, contact. Yeah. Um, I, I would say the first thing you need to double check is things called SPF and DKIM records. They're your, um, th what I find with a lot of ones, MailChimp, Action Network, any of those, when you set up a new email system, you should double check your DNS records are allowing you to send from that platform. Um, Glenn, I don't know, have you done a session on this or is there anything in Commons uh, Library about I, it? I just introduced this um, as an advanced thing to think about um, in, in a previous webinar because it is extremely complex. Um, and yes, I've just been starting to do that across the field, across my stuff. So, um, so basically what you're talking about there is that um, the, it's a verification system. So you're verifying an email with your domain and then a lot of the spam filters and email systems will then cross-reference that to see if it's verified. And so that really substantially increases your deliverability, um, but it is complex. Um, so you may need some help with that or at least for at least Google that. Um, okay. What it, was it called? It, SPF and... SPF and... and so SPF yeah. Um, and yeah, you need, you'll get a particular and DKIM, you'll get like a record from MailChimp or Action Network or whoever, and you have to put that in a TXT record in your DNS records. And it sounds like a weird other language to anyone who doesn't know it, um, but they're really important. So the same way you use a DNS record to say where your website is, if yeah. someone gets an email and they check with your DNS records and they say, no, they're not authorized. They're going to be like, that's spam. That's, you know, someone's going to try and scam me out of something. Um, and that's no matter what platform you're on, you need to set those records. Yeah. Okay. And, and the new generation of spam filters are extremely aggressive. You may have noticed a, re a reduction in your spam, but that also means it's, it's culling. So in theory, it's simply uh, adding a line of code in your DNS. Um, but my experience is it's, it, it's a little harder than that. Yeah, the, um, and the more the more time you in, invest in it, the the more you get out of it as well. Like you, once you've done DKIM, you can go into uh, into other records as well. But it's it's worth paying somebody to to set up too because the return on it is like is making sure that your emails land in people's inboxes. And the most recent record that's just been standardized is one called BIMI, which is basically the one that pulls that little logo that you see in Gmail and some other places, displays that in, in, in inboxes. Um, BIMI? Yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's really quite a specific, uh, little skill it's worth just getting a, a volunteer or, or or paying somebody um an hour's work to set up for, for folks that know what they're doing it's quick but it's it's also as as Ariane said it's a it's a whole other language and it's just really super easy to get lost yeah i know i can find someone if i know the answer if i know the question i think but um yeah i mean mailchimp doesn't even allow you to send it like if i've got a hundred emails and ten of them are generic it will just say we don't send you those e type of emails so that's, I don't think that's a spam thing, is it? That's actually MailChimp filtering it before it's got to their inboxes. Yeah, I, I haven't had, had that. Oh, okay. I had a commercial client that um, MailChimp just wouldn't let them um, send for, they had heaps of issues with those. They moved to Campaign Monitor and that was uh, solved their issues. Campaign okay. Monitor has different pricing models. 
We run um, MailChimp purely for media releases because Nation Builder does not send to role based addresses. It will just reject it and mark it as bad every time. So. But you don't get that problem with MailChimp, do you? No. Sorry, Glenn, what was the other one you mentioned or didn't run? Our campaign monitor. That was originally an American, uh, sorry, an Australian mailing app. All right, thank you. Um, I just had Greg ask a question. Can you make a list of who is available for what tasks and at what rates? Um, it's that's probably hard to collate. I mean, that context, that's probably more of what an agency would do. So, for example, Ariane works for an agency. Um, I'm personally moving to set up an agency. I'm not there yet. Um, the DKM stuff, um, I've got a, a, an associate that I work with that does that sort of stuff. Um, so that can be done. So um, also there's a um, Facebook group called FWD, um, which is from an organize, I think. Um, that's a good place to find techies and suppliers and that sort of stuff. And also speaking of uh, uh, progress, another org, they're running a Slack channel, which also has some techies and stuff in there. So I'd recommend looking at those things. Oh, yep, there's the Facebook group. Yeah, so I do recommend though with the DKMs that you do just get someone that knows what they're doing because it's a quick job if you know what you're doing and you get it wrong. Um, and my associate I'm talking about, he was looking at a big NGO and pretty much the previous supplier had gone in and set up heap of DNS and these sort of records and done a very average job of it. So he's now going in and cleaning up the mess and it, it, it's a very specialist understanding for him to even understand it's a mess and then able to clean it up. And, and I'm pretty technically savvy and I, will, I actually will get him to help me with that one specific role. Okay. It's not one of them ones you give it a go and see what happens. All righty. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I might, if there's no, if there any more questions? I was just going to say there's a there's a really easy way to, to check and see if all that stuff is set up well and it's a really but, but doing the actual setting up is um is tricky. So that link I just posted there, you can you can check and see uh, all those uh, all those records um, to see if you're able to send from your uh, email domain without getting spammed. But um, uh, yeah. If, if it comes back with a lot with with errors and things that you need to fix, then yeah, it's a real specialist skill to find. Alrighty, so thank you very much for attending and thank you very much for the host for their generous um, donation of their time. Um, so I run these uh, webinars as pay as you feel. So there's um, three great organizations, um, Cairns of Far North, uh, North Environment Centre, Friends of the Earth Australia and Digital Rights Watch. I'm sure you'll be able to find their donation forms. Um, and Essential Media um, and myself also provide commercial services in these areas. Um, and uh, if um, that's not um, appropriate for you, um, it's really important for me to, to make this free and available. Um, so sharing the videos, liking the videos, um, all that sort of stuff, writing reviews on Facebook pages is really, really helpful. So if you could uh, do that, that'd be muchly appreciated. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful uh, weekend.